Antipsychotics, as their name implies, are mainly used to treat schizophrenia and other psychotic conditions. Even though the exact cause of schizophrenia is still unknown, there's some evidence that suggests it's related to altered levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine. Now, antipsychotics are subdivided into two main categories, the first generation, or typical antipsychotics, and the second generation, or atypical antipsychotics. All right, within the brain, dopamine is found in four main dopamine pathways. The mesolimbic pathway, which controls motivation and desire, the mesocortical pathway, which helps regulate emotions, the nigrostriatal pathway, which contains motor neurons that bypass the medullary pyramids to control involuntary movements and coordination, and lastly, the tuberoinfundibular pathway, which releases dopamine to limit the secretion of prolactin. Other regions of the central nervous system that are rich in dopamine receptors include the chemoreceptor trigger zone, which initiates the vomiting reflex, and the medullary paraventricular pathway, which regulates eating behavior. However, in schizophrenia, altered levels of dopamine mainly affect the mesolimbic pathway and the mesocortical pathway. There's usually high levels of dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway, which cause positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized thought. On the other hand, low levels of dopamine in the mesocortical pathway causes negative symptoms of schizophrenia, such as lack of motivation, social withdrawal, and flat affect which basically means a lack of emotions. When it comes to treating schizophrenia, some typical antipsychotics like haloperidol, trifluperazine, and flufenazine have a higher potency, which means you need less of it to achieve a therapeutic effect. The lower potency antipsychotics include thioridazine, chlorpromazine, and thiothixine. Now, in conditions such as schizophrenia, typical antipsychotics block dopamine D2 receptors in the mesolimbic pathway, which alleviates positive symptoms of schizophrenia. However, they also block dopamine receptors in the mesocortical pathway, which might actually worsen the negative symptoms. Other psychiatric indications include psychosis, delirium, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, Tourette syndrome, and Huntington disease. Aside from their use in psychiatric disorders, blocking dopamine receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone can also decrease nausea and vomiting, while blocking histamine H1 receptors can have an antipruitic and sedative effect. All right, moving on to side effects. In the tuberoinfundibular pathway, they inhibit the release of prolactin, causing oligomenorrhea, galacteria, and gynecomastia. And lastly, in the nigrostriatal pathway, they cause extrapyramidal symptoms, which usually include abnormal movements. Let's start with dystonia, which can occur within a few hours to days of treatment, and includes muscle spasms of the tongue, face, neck, and back. It also causes oculogyric crisis, which is a spasm of the extraocular muscles, causing an upward and outward position of the eyes. After a few days to a month, there could be acathisia or pseudoparkinsonism. Acathisia is characterized by restlessness and an urge to move the limbs. Pseudoparkinsonism is characterized by muscle rigidity, usually in the facial muscles, giving the face a wooden, mask-like appearance. Other symptoms include bradykinesia, or slow movements, and tremors. It's important to note that typical antipsychotics are more likely to cause these side effects compared to the atypical antipsychotics. However, extrapyramidal symptoms usually disappear once the medication is stopped. Now, moving on to tardive dyskinesia, which can present after several months or even years, and it's characterized by constant, involuntary rhythmic movements. This typically happens with the perioral muscles, causing the person to repeatedly smack or purse their lips. Unlike acute extrapyramidal symptoms, tardive dyskinesia can be irreversible, so the medication should be discontinued at the first sign of tardive dyskinesia. Now, the most dangerous and severe extrapyramidal side effect is neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS, which typically starts days to weeks after starting the medications. It's characterized by confusion, coma, agitation, muscle rigidity, seizures, and hyperthermia. 
These symptoms are almost identical to serotonin syndrome, caused by antidepressants like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. However, serotonin syndrome causes hyperreflexia and dilated pupils, while in neuroleptic malignant syndrome, there's hyporeflexia and normal pupils. If this condition progresses, it'll cause rhabdomyolysis, where the muscles break down. Treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome consists of administration of dantrolene, which is a muscle relaxant. Finally, typical antipsychotics also cause side effects by blocking other receptors. Alpha-1 receptor inhibition causes orthostatic hypotension. Muscarinic receptor inhibition causes anticholinergic or atropine-like side effects, such as dry mouth, blurred vision, urinary retention, and constipation. And histamine H1 receptor inhibition causes sedation. The low-potency antipsychotics have a stronger sedating effect, but a low incidence of extrapyramidal symptoms. Other side effects include prolongation of the QT interval and metabolic side effects, such as weight gain, dyslipidemia, and hyperglycemia. For medicine-specific side effects, chlorpromazine causes corneal deposits, while thiorhidazine causes retinal deposits within the eye. Now, we want to make a simple and fun mnemonic that'll help you efficiently memorize and retain all these farm facts. So, let's visit our eccentric old aunt's house, and she represents the older, first-generation antipsychotics. She has two Dobermans by her feet, since these medications act on dopamine D2 receptors. Next to her, we have a table with the high-potency drugs. There's an angel doll with a big halo for haloperidol. Your aunt's dream is to travel around the world and hunt for truffles, so there's a magazine on flying planes for flufenazine and a magazine on truffles for trifluperazine. On her other side, we have the low-potency medications on the floor. Let's put a tick drinking tea for thiothixine. She's thinking about getting into shape for tick prom, so there's a magazine about prom clothing for chlorpromazine and a fitness magazine with a picture of thighs for thioridazine. Now for the drug-specific side effects, let's put a pair of reading glasses by these two magazines, since they cause visual problems. Chlorpromazine deposits in the cornea, so let's decorate the prom dress with corns, which is super hot right now. Thioridazine deposits in the retina, which is the neural layer of the eyes, so let's put some red nerves on the thighs. Now, for indications, our uncle is a hunter for Huntington's, and he's talking to a delivery man with a unicycle for psychosis and delirium. Our uncle has a lot of hunting trophies, which include a brain split into two hemispheres for schizophrenia, which means split mind. Now, one hemisphere is bigger and it has a plus sign on it, since these medications treat positive symptoms. The other half is small with a negative sign, since these medications might worsen the negative symptoms as a side effect. Next, there's also a stuffed two-headed polar bear for bipolar disorder and a tortoise for Tourette syndrome. Outside the house, our aunt built a pyramid for extra pyramidal side effects. The symptoms that appear early are on the top, and the symptoms that appear late are on the bottom. So, at the tip, there's a giant eyeball looking up and away for dystonia and oculogyric crisis, which can occur within hours to days. The second level is neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which typically happens within days to weeks of taking the medication. Since it's very similar to serotonin syndrome, we'll use the same dead knight with a few minor changes. He's in a death-like state, representing a coma. He's being cremated, so the fire represents hyperthermia. He's stiff, so there's muscle rigidity. And the armor is white, for pallor. On his chest is a broken reflex hammer, for hyporeflexia. The next level contains a restless, roaming mummy, holding an onk for acathisia. And he's wearing a wooden mask, representing pseudo-Parkinsonism. Both of these symptoms occur within days to a month. Finally, at the bottom of the pyramid is a tar pit for the tardive dyskinesia that can occur a month to years later. There's a diver with his pursed lips sticking out of the tar, gasping for breath, which represents the pursed or smacking lip motion associated with this symptom. Now, for the other side effects, let's put them next to the pyramid. 
There's a dizzy cow to represent orthostatic hypotension. There's milk leaking out of its udders for prolactinemia. Standing by it is an obese man eating ice cream for hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia. On the other side of the pyramid is a tropical palm tree for atropine-like side effects. Under the tree is a sleeping snake going hiss for sedation caused by blocking histamine receptors. All right, as a quick recap, first generation or typical antipsychotics block dopamine D2 receptors in the mesolimbic pathway, which alleviates the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. They can also treat a number of neurological and psychiatric disorders like bipolar disorder, Huntington's disease, and Tourette syndrome. High potency typical antipsychotics include haloperidol, trifluperazine, and flufenazine, while the low potency include thioridazine, chlorpromazine, and thiothixine. The major side effects are the extrapyramidal symptoms like dystonia, acathisia, and pseudoparkinsonism. The two most important ones are tardive dyskinesia, which is irreversible, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is life-threatening. Other side effects include worsening of negative symptoms in schizophrenia, hyperprolactinemia, sedation, orthostatic hypotension, and anticholinergic side effects. But wait, there's more! Here's a mind map of all the mnemonics. Go ahead and pause the video so you can test yourself to see what you remember. Stay tuned for the answers after the credits.